As you can imagine, once Justin Barrasso, in a Sports Illustrated piece, mentioned that Anthem is hemorrhaging money and looking desperately to get out from under Global Force Wrestling and sell it, you had all types of opinions out there on the wrestling websites, the podcast, via the interwebs, and the different social media platforms. Well, I got some things to say about this, because we need to get down to the heart of the matter, what the truth really is about these reports. And first off, let me address some of the TNA slash Global Force Wrestling sheep. And one in particular, but more so. I talk about American Alker, but others too. Trying to say that this is the first time the company's ever had money problems is disingenuous bull, and you know it. Using this type of argument is like literally going full retard. Don't go full retard. Because if this company never, ever, ever going back to its founding days in the asylum and the, the weekly pay-per-views that, mind you, I used to pay for every week all the way back in 2002. If they didn't have money issues to begin with, why would they have been doing the weekly pay-per-views to begin with? Number two, why did the company ever get bought by Dixie Carter and her family and Panda Energy to begin with? As much as everybody wants to crap on Dixie and legitimately so for the horrible business decisions and the ineffective leadership at the very top of the company, let's not forget that this company in its very earliest formative days was in a desperate place financially and it was Dixie Carter and her family's deep pocketbooks that saved this company so we could still be arguing about them in 2017. So to sit there and say this is the first time they've ever had money problems is just complete intellectually dishonest crap. Period. And we're going to pretend like nobody ever got paid late? I mean, come on. Now, maybe some reports have been exaggerated over the years. Maybe not as many people were paid as late. Maybe some people were paid late more. Maybe some people were shorted. You know, you can believe whatever you want, but we can't pretend that it didn't happen. And we're going to pretend people like Bobby Roode, Eric Young, Austin Aries, Samoa Joe, and of all people, AJ Styles? Leaving means absolutely nothing in terms of potential money issues for this company? Give me a break. And if they didn't have any money issues, why would this company significantly reduce the amount of pay-per-views that they did in recent years? And if you say, well, it was a change of business model to the one night only pay-per-views. Yeah, they did that because they could record and can of them, several of them at a time to reduce uh, overall production cost and they also knew that they were going to continue to struggle because years ago they used to get at some of the bigger shows a couple of thousand people and that day had way since passed there's a reason they reduced the pay-per-views and tried to change the business format and why did this company go almost three years without live events to tell me this is the first time that this company's ever had money issues is just an indication of allowing your fandom to cloud your better judgment, common sense, and logic. It is a clear-cut example of going full retard, boom, period. And then also, and this is just across the board, and it's led by idiots like Russo and so many others, this is just more lies put out there by Meltzer Magoo and the rest of the dirt sheet crew. This is a lie. There's absolutely no truth to Anthem wanting to sell Global Force Wrestling. So Meltzer Magoo and the rest of the crew are lying about this one, okay? Just like uh, the internet was lying about Vince Russo working again for TNA and the company came out so strongly against it and ultimately we found out that was the case. Just like it was a lie that Spike TV wasn't going to renew their television deal with TNA, just like Destination America, even after bringing on Ring of Honor as a second wrestling show, uh, canceling Impact Wrestling was a lie, just like Panda Energy selling the company was a lie. I mean, wrestling's entire history is built off of the premise of a lie. Kayfabe, working people, trying to present something as real when it's 100% scripted, planned out, fake. And yet we're going to believe the business first? Furthermore, especially if we're talking about this particular company and their history over the years... They've played very loose with the facts and have flat out lied to people. And sometimes I understand the position that they were in and that's what they had to do. I get that. But let's not pretend that they were being factual or truthful because they weren't. Period. Oh, Spike TV is not going to pull out them. Except they did. Destination America is not going to cancel them. Especially once they added Ring of Honor. What the fuck do you know? Yeah, except they canceled both of them. Oh, Panda's not dixing them. They've been doing it for years. They're not going to finally sell them. And except they did. 
So shut up. Here's some other things that I think are interesting, some things to kind of take note of. Just because somebody like Kevin Sullivan says that the reports of a sale are not true doesn't make it so. And again, especially based off of the company's established history of lying and playing loose with the truth and the facts, just because somebody that's employed with the company says it doesn't make it true. It doesn't make it false either. And this is where people kind of get into their own preconceived notions of whether they want it to be true or they want to believe that it is false. But the fact is, just because this guy says it doesn't make it true, doesn't make it false. It doesn't make it either. Especially, again, knowing wrestling is ultimately about working you and especially knowing that this is a guy that's a, in charge of production for Impact Wrestling. What would be the benefit of coming out and admitting, yeah, we are for sale? I mean, let's use a little common sense here. And again, just because Ed Nordholm says that we're not selling, that doesn't make it true either. Again, it also doesn't make it false. But the worst thing he could do if there was a sale process underway or negotiations for a sale underway right now would be to undercut any leverage and put that information out there, which could create a panic amongst fan base because they could say, well, frick it, it's being sold anyways. Why would I continue to support it? Talent might want to leave. And the people that you're in negotiations with would be like, this was supposed to be confidential. You spilled the beans. Screw you. We're pulling out. Where would be the advantage of talking about the company is for sale, admitting that you're going through those proceedings? The answer is there is no benefit. You would undercut your leverage and you would hurt any potential negotiations. So just because people like Kevin Sullivan and Ed Nordholm say it's not true doesn't mean that it's not true. It doesn't mean that it is true either. I just think that's important to point out. And there's no coincidence why Anthem all of a sudden revealed the plans for other deals that they had in the pie, getting renewed for pop television, getting the streaming service, getting that ready to be up and running. That was strategically planned to be announced and rushed to be announced specifically as soon as this deal or this news came out or the reports came out, the rumors came out about Anthem hemorrhaging money over this whole situation and looking to sell. If you can't see that this was a PR move time to change some of the narrative, then I don't know what I can do because I can't help you at this point. What we also know is this company doesn't do live events and they just tried to do some live events last month and they weren't exactly huge rate raising success. And you look at, they're still doing these mass TV tapings where they're recording months at a time. They've lost 75% plus of their television audience over the past three to four years. There's no real positive spin to put on this. This company is not in a good place. They're still breathing and have a pulse, so I am still optimistic enough, believe me, even with all of my cynicism in life, that as long as they're alive, there's a chance, but let's not pretend that people talking about how bad things are, are bad people, or they're lying, because the proof is in the pudding. If things were good, or things were better, or this company was in a good place financially or a good place in any way, they would be doing live events which have been critical to the success of professional wrestling companies, especially national and international brands over the years. They wouldn't be recording two plus months of television at a time. I mean, think about that. Two plus months of television at a time. It's a lot cheaper to fly everybody in and record a bunch of crap for two or three days as opposed to bringing them in once every other week. I mean, and you've lost, based off of Nielsen ratings, over 75% of your ratings. That's not good. I don't care who you want to spin it. But then you hear these reports that while Anthem may want to sell, the merger hasn't been completed. And therefore, as a result, when you're talking about Global Force Wrestling, Jeff Jarrett still technically owns Global Force Wrestling and Anthem owns Impact Wrestling. So they would be selling a show without a company name attached to it and without a roster because the roster would also ultimately be under GFW, or even if you say they're under, it's just really strange, even if they were assigned to contracts with Anthem. And that's just really strange. The dynamics of that don't make a whole lot of sense. So you've had a wrestling show without actually having a company name. And, and here would be my bigger question and a little pause for concern. If Anthem actually was looking to sell I would question the intelligence of the people like Ed Nordholm and others involved with the leadership of Anthem because you got into this knowing that they went from Spike to Destination America to this. They hadn't been doing live events in a while. They had changed their pay-per-view format and that wasn't a success. Uh, loss of viewership was significant. What the hell did you think you were getting? I mean, that would be my question. If you were looking to sell so quickly, 
That either means A, you didn't do enough homework to realize how bad the situation was, or B, you got in and realized very quickly how much worse you were making the situation and now you're panicking and want to get out. Either way, to me, it's not a good reflection of Anthem and the leadership of the company if it was actually true. And, and honestly, if, it, if it's true they were hemorrhaging up to a million dollars a week, I, I do question how would this company still be operational at this point, based, especially based off of the ad revenue split television deal they have with Pop TV based off of the vastly decreased audience compared to a few years ago. No live event revenue coming in. I can't imagine a lot of merch revenue coming in. This company would have already shut it off. They would have had no choice. And based off of that, if you want to say a million dollars a week over the course of a year, which I believe it's been about a year, maybe a little bit more since Anthem's been in the fold here, that's over $50 million. I would have to imagine at some point in time, Anthem would have to start looking at liquidating significant other assets too, and if anything else, potentially getting to a point where they would have to enter into bankruptcy proceedings because they would have lost so much money with this deal. So the whole thing I'm coming around to, and the whole point of this, is the truth is we don't know for sure. And this is a situation where just because you might want to believe that these reports are false, it doesn't mean they are. On the flip side, just because you want these reports to be true, it doesn't mean they are either. We don't know. Based off of certain preconceived notions and the history of this organization, regardless of the name that it's gone under, I think you're much more logical to choose the point of there's some type of smoke, there's some type of fire, there's some type of truth to this. This didn't just get pulled out of somebody's ass and out of thin air. And it didn't. All right, let's not be naive about this. Let's stop being fanboys and sheep for the company. Let's stop being so damn naive about it. And let's be honest, just because you're nice to them, it's not going to change anything. And it doesn't mean they're going to like you anymore, okay? Your eyes can clearly tell you there are major problems here. Like, again, you have to be blinded to it. Borderline going full retard to pretend that everything this company is doing is an indication that everything is hunky-dory and everything is just fine. And it always has been. That's insane. Now, to the people that don't watch, here's some truth. If you don't watch the product, you don't watch the company, and you don't care, you're not a fan of them, at this point in time, you've got so many other options out there, I'm sure there's something you've got to like, just hop off their dicks. Because it's not productive, and you don't look cool doing it, and that's just the way it is. Just hop off this company's dick. Because the last thing this company needs is more negativity because frankly, his company has done enough to create enough of a negative vibe around itself, let's be honest. But I don't get it. You know, the people are getting a sadistic pleasure out of this. So, and a deluxe man I called out on this crap because I thought this was bullshit too. He's talking about at this point in time, it's okay if the company goes under. You would expect maybe somebody like me to say that. You know it's gotten to a bad place when somebody like Alex has freaking said that. Okay, so then if we want to talk about this, so then he should have been glad when ECW died 16 years ago because of all the people that got fucked over in the company in terms of Paul Heyman not paying their fucking asses. If we're going to use the logic of GFW and TNA, what they've done to not pay people and how they've treated wrestlers, let's not even get into Lucha Underground and how AAA, who has an, a vested interest in LU, uh, has treated people over the years. Let's not even get into WWE. I couldn't cover all the horrible things that WWE did in a 10-hour YouTube video. And no, you're not getting 10 hours of a video on that. I don't care what the hell you do. Buy 100 OTR Essential shirts and maybe we'll talk. So then it should be okay if NXT dies and goes away, right? Now, if you don't like them and you don't care, then just hop off their dicks. But if you are a fan, an alleged fan and a so-called fan, Stop sitting there and putting all this positive spin and trying to live in a fantasy land that everything is hunky-dory and gravy. Stop trying to sit there and get mad because other people criticize this company for all the stupid bullshit they've done over the years and still continue to do. Stop sitting there and trying to pretend like the only real fans are the ones that are 100% positive because if anything, it just proves of how moronic you actually are. Oh, I'm going to be nice to all these people in the business and everything else. So that's great and awesome. And they're, gonna, they're not going to do shit. When you turn your back, they're still going to fucking mock you and laugh you and call you a fucking mark anyways. It's time for you, if you are a so-called alleged true fan of this company, to do your part to hashtag Save Impact Wrestling, and it's put up or shut up. Now, I know when it comes to wrestling fans talking about money, that could be asking for a whole lot. But if you really want this company 
to get out of this hole and get out of this mess, and you really believe in this company, and you're really truly a fan, then this is your time. When that streaming service comes live, you subscribe every month. I'm going to. I do it with WWE Network. I'm most certainly going to do it here. If you really truly are a fan of this company, and you want to see them succeed, then buy Bound for Glory November 5th. I know I'm going to. And I know a lot of these people that pretend to be such raging TNA slash Global Force Wrestling marks are still going to sit there and stream the shit. So they're the most pathetic type of fan of all. Talk all these shit about the WWE sheep and all the crap they do to bash on Global Force Wrestling yet all the time. When the opportunity is there and it presents itself to do your part to help save it, you're still going to stream the shit. What a fucking hypocrite. You're the worst people of our. That's the real truth. The real truth is if you don't care about this company, then stop fucking talking about it. The real truth is we don't exactly know what the hell is going on. But let's not pretend that everything's fantasy land and hunky-dory. And the real ultimate truth is that this company is in a bad spot, period. And even Ed Norholm acknowledged they're not making money right now. So if you're in a business and you're not profiting, that's not good. So let's take Ed Norholm at his word because if he's basically said, and he has, that the company's not turning a profit with this venture right now, then you know it's in a bad way, then here is your chance, the so-called alleged true Global Force Wrestling fans, to step up to the plate, pony up the fucking dough, or most of all, you can hop off this company's dick and shut the fuck up.